once you learn those things about people, like the struggles they've been through, the things they've overcome, what they're dealing with right now, like your heart explodes for them and you're just like, I love you. Like I like really like love all those people. Yes. We it's love fun. podcasting. We love we it. It's we so are fun. mustering up all the energy, all the enthusiasm. Hi. Okay. I'm Hi. Uh, hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Welcome <laughs> to Inner Archaeology. I'm Sarah. And I'm Emily. And Wee. thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Um, you the, I guess the best place to kind of find info about where to listen or stream video because we do video podcasts sometimes is Sarah, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Interarchaeology.com or interarchaeology.tv. <laughs> Huzzah. And Huzzah. We, also, we also have a Patreon where mm-hmm. you Which is can- our fun saucy episodes. Our- saucy episodes and you can subscribe for just like five bucks a month and you'll have access to the whole library of episodes that we've uploaded there we upload a couple a month um yeah and that's that's that yeah. <laughs> patreon.com backslash inner archaeology did you say there that i can't remember no, i did not you're the url <laughs> girl <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so those are all the lovely places you can find us, as well as interarchaeology.com is kind of the place where you can find um, just all the spaces, all the links and stuff to the different places you can find us, because, you know, everybody has their their preference when it comes to mm-hmm. podcasting. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. So we're going to talk mm-hmm. a little bit about, actually, I'm really excited to talk to you about this because we haven't really had a chance to dig into it. We've kind of been saving it, really. Yeah. Um. <laughs> We just had an in-person event with 70 Write Your Way to Freedom students. And for those of you who don't know, Write Your Way to Freedom is a program that I have where I teach people copywriting. And in it, we do a lot of like business development and mindset work. Um, And we have a beautiful, beautiful community that we've created over the last four years online. We had our first in-person event in 2019. Obviously, the pandemic kind of like put a halt on that, but I'm hoping it's an annual thing. And then this year it was 70 students flew all the way to Los Angeles from like all over the States. Um, And we got together in Venice, California, uh, right on the beach. And it was, you know, two, two days of, you know, business development and mindset work and community building and collaboration and inspiration. Um, And it was uh, honestly, it's been it's been interesting because when people ask me about it, I, I'm like, it it was so much more magical than anything I ever could have imagined. Mm. And that's what I'm excited to talk to you about today and kind of like because we just haven't really like downloaded. Right. Um, because what well, we did, we had a little chat at the end of it, like Sunday night, we like sat on the couch, mm. just like, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> It was so um, intense, yeah. And it was just, yeah. I, I, and so I don't know. I, I I keep going to like post about it on Instagram. It's been like a week plus, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I don't. I, I'm having like trouble like finding the words because it was so mm. rich. Mm. Um, and it wasn't. And I don't even say like that from like, like I create. I created something so like rich. It was like a collective. thing that was created by all Mm -hmm. the different people that were there and yeah help help (laughs) this is where I I, like normally call Emily and I'm like (laughs) help me sort through my thoughts and we just decided to do it on the podcast instead of over the phone yes exactly (laughs) we did do that and I love that about us yeah um yeah it was like I mean I went I was not um able to attend the 2019 Master, mastermind. I just bit my tongue so hard. Um, but <laughs> but I was able to come to this one and I was so excited. But I didn't really like know what my expectations were, right? Because these are right. these are students that are entrepreneurs, focusing very much on um mindset work. There's so much mindset work you have to do as an entrepreneur. And mm-hmm. um I just didn't know what the level of receptivity would be and openness and 
you know, I thought it was like, it was so funny. One of the very first things you did, which I thought was so brilliant was you kind of had everybody like raise their hands. Um, if they like wanted to make a new friend and, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And if they really, if they would really love it, if somebody came up to them and was like, Hey, my name is so-and-so, uh, you know, you want to hang out? Everybody's mm-hmm. raising their hands. It was such a, such a good exercise to kind of like bust through that, like, you know, whatever that barrier is that we feel. Yeah, Cause you normally too, like- go to events and people put up, like they put on their mask, they put up a wall, mm. they show their best self or they think they are right. And mm. they, and you, you just are, you're like putting on a performance generally mm. when you go to an event. And so I asked these series of questions. It was like, how many people would love to make a new friend? Like who's mm-hmm. not gonna raise their hand? Everybody's like, heck yeah. How many people would, um, feel a little awkward like going up to people Mm -hmm. and being like hi I think you're cool let's be friends yes uh because I know like oh I just saw this like meme that made me laugh so hard where it was like have you ever had like an adult interaction and you walk away and you thought well that wasn't my best work (laughs) (laughs) yes because sometimes I can be like fairly like you know good and charismatic and on Mm -hmm. it and then sometimes I'm like er 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 so awkward uh, same (laughs) same same and so I was like why don't we just like call out we all have those moments and feel that way Mm -hmm. and then uh yeah this part was actually really funny to me because I was like gonna ask how many people were extroverts and introverts to kind of be like extroverts be nice to your introverts right Mm -hmm. and I thought Mm -hmm. it would be like 50 50 but I was like how many people are extroverts and like four people put their hands right right Oh, we are an entire room of introverts. Like, I, it literally, uh-huh. like, stopped me in my tracks because I had such right. expectations about how this was going to play out. And right. I was like, wow, this actually makes a lot of sense. You all chose a yeah. writing career. <laughs> right. Makes sense. We're all introverts. And I remember watching that whole thing pan. I was, like, one of the, like, extroverts. I, w- I was going to go ahead and, like, <laughs> raise my yeah. hand for, to support the extroverts. And and it does make so much sense. And so – and because of that, I was just like – like, I just didn't know, like, how open, how vulnerable we were going to get. And it was very mm. much, and I love how, like, you created the, the like, the flow of the two days was really, like, there was a lot of room for the people who attended to define, like, how it was going to be the energy the feeling the intensity Mm, it mm -hmm. was like they are the ones that created that and I feel like are right that and I feel like you were just kind of catching and facilitating the energy that they were bringing Mm -hmm. and um and I was so blown away like I'm getting chills actually just thinking about like the level of vulnerability and honesty Mm -hmm. and just like pure just openness that these people were exhibiting just blew me away and it was showing up in like just I mean we could we could it was like we could not get them to stop talking with each other because they were I all know. like best we friends to, like, with each other yeah it was if you had you would have never known that that was a room of introverts at, and, or like, strangers never. like yeah or people who've never met in person before you know they're like literally like holding each other I know they're like and, and I would and be like trying people... to get them to move on to the next thing and they like wouldn't stop talking but in like their... it was so amazing and funny I, I was just like oh my gosh you guys are hilarious I know and we felt like we needed to apologize like sorry I know you're all bonding but we gotta move on and, Wait, and we like, will how... just stay here forever <laughs> seriously and how many people like shared like I think feel like this we're so similar like we're like the mm-hmm. same person and 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 there was so much like empathy in that room so mm-hmm. much and i feel like all of these students came and just felt really seen and supported yes. and connected yeah. and like i'm not alone even though I, you know, the, the, the solo entrepreneur is kind of like a solitaire can be kind of solitary, you know, and you were, Mm -hmm. and I know that was like part of the whole point of this event was to create community. And it happened, like, it was like explosive how that happened. It was, it was Mm -hmm. like remarkable to witness that. One of the things that I know we both noticed is that first of all, I'm like really happy. I know everyone's name from that event by the end of the weekend. Mm-hmm. And I'm like pretty mm-hmm. proud of that because it was something be, I like, yeah. well, I wanted, it's like, well, I knew, I felt like I knew about half people's names going in half mm-hmm. or so. And I was like, I even like had little pictures of their faces next to their names in like a doc. So, so I was like trying to yeah. memorize them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I had a conversation with every single person. I mean, mm. and the thing is, is because 
we set a tone. Um, I think we set a tone on and like our online community, but then like right at the beginning. And then also, I actually think our podcast played a little bit of a role in setting a tone and just like being able to like get right into like real conversations. Mm. The conversations I had with everyone that weekend were so real. Like there was no, there was not that like layer of, um, I don't know, just like, so what's next yeah what do you like you know what's like what's your niche what are you doing how do you have any kids you know what I mean it was all like what are your thoughts on abortion (laughs) no not not really I mean I did have a really like and crazy conversation with like a group Mm. of people about abortion and I was like (laughs) this is just like I I don't know like we just went like in so many different like layers Mm. and directions about like life and family and and um struggles that we've overcome I mean like Mm. some one woman shared something so like profound about her blocks around like wanting to have children and Mm. like another one like shared like you know about how she was just like being held back by like so much fear and trauma another one was like sharing with me about how she's just like the people that she's surrounded with are like kind of like small in the way that they like think about what's possible Mm -hmm. in their life and how she had never been around people like thinking bigger for themselves. And I mean, it was just like, those were the kinds of conversations that we were having that I don't know. I've just never gotten to that level, like with that many people that consistently and it kind of blew my mind. And also I was kind of grateful that I was in a place in my life where I felt like I could like hold space for it all. Mm-hmm. Cause I think a younger mm-hmm. version of me might've been like kind of overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, because it was a lot. Like it was mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I feel like I learned so many profound things about so many people. And the thing is, is like, once you learn those things about people, like the struggles they've been through, the things they've overcome, mm-hmm. what they're dealing with right now, like your heart explodes for them. And you're just like, yeah. I love you. <laughs> like, I like really like love all those yeah. people. <laughs> Yes. And there wasn't like one person that like, I didn't feel that way about, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? I was like, wow, Mm -hmm. I like literally love like all of you so, so Mm -hmm. much. Yes. It was very cool. It was like, I feel so, so much the same. Like every conversation I had was so meaningful. And I was kind of coming into that, you know, we were joking that I was like the emotional support, like bestie or whatever, which, you know, I was coming into it, not being very familiar with these people. There were a few people that I knew from like social media that we had chatted about, but not Mm -hmm. really knowing a lot of these or having interacted with them. Mm -hmm. But because of the podcast, um, almost all of them were like familiar with me between the podcast and, um, master your mindset, master your mindset. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I had so many incredible, meaningful conversations where people would come up and they would mention something that I said in the podcast or, or whatever. And, and then just, it was like, they were opening their heart to me. I felt so honored. I was just like, mm. wow. Like at every single time, mm somebody like shared something with me about their life or what they struggled with. I was just, it was like this precious like gift that I felt like I was like being asked to hold for a moment. And I was just like, that's how it felt. Trusting me. Like, Like, yeah. (laughs) It felt like there were so many like beautiful, like sides of people being shared that wouldn't otherwise, that they wouldn't otherwise like maybe feel safe, like sharing and exposing in like a room full of like kind of strangers yeah um it it I don't know it really like blew my mind I'm still like (laughs) yeah (laughs) I don't know but I think we just created a space right and we really played to our strengths Mm. like that was something that I'm realizing we did like there's there's so many we, you and I are very different and we do different things well. And I think one of the things that we did really well that weekend is just kind of creating space and allowing flexibility to kind of go with like what they wanted, you know, like that yeah. poem, for example, mm-hmm. did that. We talked about this poem, which I feel like we should read. We should read. Uh, it. Yeah. Like pull, it up pull that up while I'm kind of talking about it. Yeah. So we, we did this, we, we kind of dug into this poem and you and I, like when I was telling you about it, I was like, 
I don't know, we'll leave like maybe like 15, 20 minutes for this poem. I really like the poem. I don't know if you liked the poem. I was like, okay, Uh cool. (laughs) One other person likes the poem and maybe they'll like it too, Mm -hmm. but also Mm -hmm. who knows? So we'll leave like 15, 20 minutes to kind of just like touch on the poem and then uh, move on from there. Cause I just like, didn't think it would like, I didn't know. I didn't know how it would like resonate. And then we want, we talked about that for like an hour and a half. They're like, I know, I know. (laughs) And they had so many beautiful insights. And I was just like, I was just like, oh my God, I know. Like, I didn't even think about it that way. Like what? (laughs) I know. So here, do you have the poem? I have the poem. I'm going to read it for us. Yes. The small woman builds cages for everyone she knows. While the sage who has to duck her head when the moon is low keeps dropping keys all night long for the beautiful rowdy prisoners. That's a poem by Halvis. He's a a Persian poet. Um, That's a poem which is so powerful, so packed with just like amazing Mm -hmm. meaning. And 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 I agree. Like not everybody is into poetry or or like Mm -hmm. I I also felt so surprised at like how how deeply everybody felt that you know Mm -hmm. and even when because we had the poems printed on this like nice paper and they were on everybody's seats and when we were kind of like starting that day just walking through I was hearing people being like oh my gosh I have chills and people already like their eyes welling up with tears just from reading the poem initially so it was like I I just, the fact that like there was this thing that resonated with you so deeply and then you like shared it and that like resonance, like, like it just continued, like it reverberated through this entire room of people. And it was so powerful. Like, and I think Mm -hmm. that there is something about attaching like, like a thematic meaning to like a piece of art like this, that, that I think like really like grounds it into us as like humans for whatever reason, Mm -hmm. it like helps us Mm -hmm. digest things like on a deeper level or process things. Um, Mm -hmm. that was definitely something that surprised me. Yeah. That it was like an imagery to hold on to, you know what I mean? Because people Mm -hmm. keep saying like, you know, Ooh, dropping keys. Like they're talking about dropping keys now. And I got that. And I loved it because I got the poem actually from one of my students, Katie, mm-hmm. she sent it to me and I had this whole like experience with the poem. Cause at first I was like, Ooh, like <laughs> this mm-hmm. makes me uncomfortable. And then I like kept reading it and it was just like such a beautiful story of all the different phases of our life, how you can mm-hmm. be big, how you can be small, how you can be the prisoner, how you can be the sage, how you're both, um, how it's a continuous like process of dropping keys, how the prisoners unlock themselves. Mm. Um, and then we had those, I can't, I can't get over the two stories of the two women who used to like actually work with prisoners. Right. And they were talking about, and they, yeah. And they were like, yeah. And then what you realize when you actually like work in a prison is that like the sage might actually be people that you like, the sage isn't like a woman in like white, like you know, right. it could be <laughs> on unexpected. a mountaintop. Yeah. The yeah. sage can be somebody like incarcerated who's a, you would think otherwise is a disaster, but they're teaching mm. you profound life mm. lessons and you have to be open to who the sage is. And I was just like, oh shit. <laughs> yes. Like, I have like chills just hearing that. Yes. Oh my God. And they were talking about how much they learned from the inmates that they worked with. And I was just like, oh my gosh, what is happening? This is so amazing. Like that concept of, being open to learning Mm -hmm. from unexpected people, unexpected places. Like, Mm -hmm. like, and that's that whole idea of that beginner's mind is like, I can learn from everything and I'm open Mm -hmm. to learning from everything. Like that is such a beautiful state of being. It's something I like strive for, you know, but like how many, how many like amazing keys or like nuggets of wisdom are we just passing by because we're making these assumptions that you can't learn anything from this child or this Mm -hmm. person or whatever, because they're not looking Mm -hmm. like some ideal of what you think a sage or a wise person is. And I think like really pushing back against that assumption and opening Mm -hmm. yourself up to receiving wisdom from anywhere, like Mm -hmm. is that's, profound and I think like can have a a massive effect on on somebody's life for sure yeah and also the for me a big part of the concept was like being both the sage and the prisoner because like yeah like we talked a lot about how there are different areas of your life where like 
you know, maybe you are a sage in this area, but you're a prisoner in this area. Like this is mm. like, this is your struggle. This is the thing. This is the, this is the thing that you are like having a harder time with. Yes. Um, but in this area, like, you know, you have a lot to offer and give other people you can be giving in this space and, um, and how everyone has like something like a key that can be dropped. Like, yes. And uh, it was just so unexpected and so beautiful. And that conversation was like, really like like was one of the moments where I was just like wow we are like creating collectively together something like really really beautiful Mm -hmm. um and I think that's something that like for me because I know we talked a little bit about that is like a lesson I've learned is I think because I think in the 2019 I tend to get like real hung up on like value and like wanting something to feel like super like valuable and packed full of like yes value (laughs) Uh that I often forget to leave space for something like organic to happen and there to Mm. be lessons in that. And I Mm. think in the last two or three years, I've really um, Mm -mm. tried to remind myself that there's value in that and just like creating a space and kind of seeing what comes and having the confidence, quite frankly, to feel like I can handle whatever comes up. And kind of like deal with it because it's a really beautiful thing when you let everybody kind of Mm co-collaborate on whatever it is you're creating when you're making an event. And that, that's like my biggest thing that I've like taken away from that event Mm -hmm. was just like, we were all like co-creators of that experience Mm -hmm. and I just love them so much. (laughs) I do. And I do like agree that it takes like a level of just kind of like bravery and self-trust to not only to have an event, (laughs) like, you know, and it makes sense that your first event was really structured because that felt like probably more safe, right? Having something a little bit more unstructured with room and space to like allow things to organically like evolve and develop. That's like, that is absolutely like what you said, like really just like trusting yourself, your ability to like intuitively navigate the things that come up. And I remember when we were even going over kind of the, um, the schedule and the things you were like, Oh, I, you, we, we were noticing that there was space, you know, we were mm-hmm. like, okay, there's space here. I'm leaving all this space over here. I'm going to leave space over here. And all the space was like filled with like really beautiful, like at the end of the, the event, every single bit was like filled up. So there was not like a single we were moment running over like a weird all the lull. time. Yes. <laughs> like with all the space that you left for that, it's like, it, it filled it completely and could have filled more, I'm sure. But like, mm-hmm. I feel like mm-hmm. it was a really nice balance of structure and space for like that organic mm-hmm. evolution. And, and I do think that it, it did very much play to, I don't know. I can't tell you how in alignment it felt to like do that with you to like be up yeah. there, like chatting about this poem or like just flying off the cuff and like sharing our thoughts and ideas about whatever topic and not having it like, you know, super planned out. It felt like I felt like we were tapping into our strengths and like a whole new level and how they like work mm-hmm. together really well felt so good. It was like, I know. I, I feel like we like leveled up our like friendship what we or do. something. What we do. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it was, cause it was really nice to have you there. Cause you, you and I just think so differently. Mm-hmm. And so there were, you know, if there was a moment where I was like, you know, I don't necessarily have much to add. Like, what are you thinking right now? And then for you to like jump in. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then have something and I'd be like, oh, right. Yeah. It was just so much, Uh it felt so much better to like, to have a conversation than it did to sit up there and present. And that's like, when I was planning it, like I I was like going to have a projector and slides and I was like, no, (laughs) Mm. we didn't even use the little whiteboard easel thing that we got. I thought we were going to need that, but we really didn't. Yeah. Because, and, and I also think that like having it more conversational, because even me, I was like, I'm just going to give myself permission to be conversational the entire way through, yeah. you know, and it felt so much better than trying to like have some keynote speech or like, um, I don't know, because it allowed for like flexibility and people to like jump in and you to add yeah. thoughts. And um, 
I think yeah and then even like and there were points when we were doing that wasn't it the poem where I like I just was like go go look at your notes (laughs) oh yeah I like totally like stopped the flow of conversation I was like Hey you, go, go, go look at your notes on the computer. <laughs> and you went over and read your notes and you like read the thoughts out loud and you were like, did I write this? And it made me <laughs> laugh so hard. And I was like, yes, that's oh why I needed gosh. you to read it because it was so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. I And I think that that allowing it to be conversational, I think promoted this intimacy that like mm, was mm-hmm. like so present because because it wasn't these like stiff you know professional like presentations it was a conversation between like best friends which i think like spilled over into them having conversation with like their new friends like it, it mm-hmm. just created an atmosphere that was so conductive for mm-hmm. the mindset work that we were hoping to accomplish. And I feel like kind of blew out of the water, like where people actually went with it all, mm-hmm. you know? I think also um, in doing, like that's something that I've always kind of wanted to do is just seem more human and less like, because then that's when people think they can't like achieve what you've achieved. Cause you're right? not relatable anymore. Yeah, yeah. Cause you're not relatable. And it's like, nah, I'm, well, yeah. but it's not even like the point for me. It's like, I mean like that's a side effect. Right. But the point for me of just trying to like remind people of like my messiness is that mm-hmm. then I think the things feel so much more attainable to you. Like mm-hmm. you're like, Oh, I, if she can do that, then I can do it too. And that's very much how I like feel about the things I've done. I'm like, you can definitely like figure this out. Yeah. And I think that's actually like was one of my favorite points because we had a panel and Jacob McMillan joined us, which was so lovely because I adore Mm -hmm. him. He's another really like successful, amazing copywriter and like really good dude. And uh, one of my favorite things in the panel that he kind of brought up and I was like, yes, I've been thinking about this nonstop is he was just like, there are so many people running businesses that like you want to be running that are so much like less qualified and like less intelligent and less put together than you. Like, he's like, it's not like, he's like, once you get like in a room full of those people, you're not like, Oh wow. They're all like amazing. And like, Mm-hmm. You're in fact, you're more often than not, because I've I've in the last year really invested in my like mentorships and I'm in like three really like high level mentorships with people who have like very, very, very successful businesses. And my and what I'm always blown away by is that they're not special and they're not mm-hmm. like it's like not unattainable. Mm-hmm. And it feels almost like there's like for me, it's like it's. I just feel like a veil has been like lifted and I'm Mm. like, Oh, you're not, nobody is that far from like, I don't know, having a hundred million dollar business if you really want it. Or you know what I mean? Or like creating like an, a network of like, it's, it depends on what you want. So, right. So it's like, but what I'm really trying to like, you know, drive home here is that when you get into rooms full of people who are like highly, highly successful, what you very quickly realize is that it's not that out of reach mm-hmm. for everyone, for anyone. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is like, honestly, like one of the biggest lessons I've learned in the last, like the last few years. And I just like want everyone to know it. I'm like, it's actually a sham. Like you can do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> yeah. I love that. The only thing holding you back is like what you think is possible for yourself. Is what, Not your the beliefs in your own mind. Oversimplification. Yeah. Oversimplification. Right, right. We know how everybody, I feel, we both feel about that. But in general, like you can do so much mm-hmm. if you want to. And um, I don't know. So. Yeah. I, I wonder I just, like how much. It, it, the space we create in our mind is so much bigger than any space that's in reality between here and there, right? Like it's just right, which is what you're saying, and and I think like you getting yes, to feel that it. in a room, yeah, because it's yes. just like it, it, it's a belief. It's a belief that like oh no, that's impossible, unattainable. I could never. And and I wonder how much of that is truly when, if you were to like parse it out and dissect that is fear of being that successful. 
you know, yeah, and like sure. of achieving that or becoming that right. or having that influence and mm-hmm. how, how drastically that would change like your life, you know? And mm-hmm. ugh, yes. And if you even want it, like you, some people mm-hmm. don't want that and that's like mm-hmm. totally fine too. But like, if you're interested in impact, which I am very much interested in, <laughs> I feel like it's like what drives most of my decision-making in the world of like entrepreneurship um it's like it's it's so within rage to Mm -hmm. have like a really big impact um Mm -hmm. and I think that's the importance of these events right because so many people met other people who are on the same path as them when they don't have those people in their lives and that's huge like that in and of itself is like so powerful to surround yourself with people who like they fucking get it like they get what you're trying to do. They've also maybe been there themselves or like are a few steps ahead of you or maybe a few steps behind you. And you realize that like, oh, we're actually like all the same and we're just mm-hmm. trying to figure this out. And um, it looks a little different, but if I can just stay connected to the people who are like actively like pursuing this thing, um, it's going to make it so much easier for me when I have mm-hmm. doubts or right. – when I'm like confused or overwhelmed or like beating myself up because I think, wow, I'm an idiot. I I don't Mm. don't know how I like didn't see this. And so I think that's a really like powerful reason to like get people together and stuff. Like Mm -hmm. so much so. And I, and I feel like, like coming away from that, it was so reinforcing just in my own self like if you would have told um, me, yeah. I don't know how mm-hmm. many years ago that we would be doing something like this, I would be like, what? Like, just not that like, I wouldn't think it was possible, but it would have felt so big and intense. And then doing it felt so good and normal and like, okay. I wasn't like freaking out or like intimidated. I I, I don't know how many people I've talked to just in my life who were like, you were talking in front of a room full of people. Wasn't that scary? And I was like, it just like, wasn't though. Like it felt so good in that room to be sharing. I felt like I was in a room full of friends. Yes. Yes. And they did that. They created that. that. That was beautiful. And that was really, really like generous and amazing. Mm -hmm. I used to take failing grades in college when there was an oral presentation, mm-hmm. like no joke. I had at least two times I can remember where it was like an oral presentation was like 10% of our grade. I like got good grades in college. And um, my professor would be like, and I would be like, I'm just not going to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I had such a fear of talking in front of people. Mm-hmm. And I would like flush bright red. And I would, I mean, I just hated it. And so I would just like take feeling grades rather than talk in front of a room full of people. Right. And so if you had told me (laughs) 10 years ago when I was in college that I would be like comfortable standing in front of 70 people, there is no fucking chance I would have believed you. I would have been like, I I would have not believed you Mm -hmm. because it was so, it is so worlds apart from like where I once was like worlds apart. Yeah. But it didn't happen overnight, right? Right, right. It started with my awkward YouTube videos. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> it started with my Facebook lives, like, in the community. It started, like, with that. It started right. with, like, posting on social media and then getting to a place where I'm like, oh, wow, this, like, feels really good to be talking to all these people. Especially if you're doing it with, like, the expectation that I'm just, like, I'm just, like, here to, like, help and facilitate and do my best and I'm not a professional speaker so Mm -hmm. and uh we're not here for a keynote like this is not a TED talk I don't right (laughs) I don't have that um but yeah it's so Mm -hmm. wild to think how you just do little things and then eventually you're ready for like the next thing and it doesn't feel as big and then there's other big Mm -hmm. things that you're you're looking forward to you know and trying you know I mean god I know in my life I'm just like mustering up the courage for but and then there's someday I'm gonna look back on that and that's that self-trust and just being like I can grow and achieve things that I once thought was impossible that's just something I know about myself you know and having that resolution is so valuable (laughs) yeah and I think um it's just I don't know. I just like, it's so hard to put into words because it's like, 
It's the thing, it's more like that feeling of growing into something that's unexpected mm. um, for yourself because you're just kind of like trusting that you want to take the next right step that feels good um, for whatever you're like trying to create. That, you, you, I don't know. It's almost like I've kind of like, I really stopped planning more than like a year out. Yeah. You know, and even then, like, my plans are so loose because I know the value of, like, walking through open doors mm-hmm. and following an opportunity when it feels like a fuck yeah, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, that mm-hmm. is, like, I don't know. And it's just not something that's talked a lot about in business uh, development, really. It kind of is more, like, with women, but um, it's, like, one of the most valuable things that you can, like, cultivate mm-hmm. within yourself, I think. But also you have to believe that there's value in that. And we've been kind of, that's kind of been like stamped out of us. Like, right. Be rational, be reasonable, do the right thing, be responsible. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's, have your five year plan. Have the, yeah. yeah. And those are the things that like, I don't know. It's funny because it like parallels just how like the event was like that, you, you know, we're talking about here about life, but we, you created this event and you left space for there to be this intuitive growth and for it to Mm -hmm. be you to be surprised by how that Mm -hmm. space is filled. And you're talking about this with life, like that to, to have enough self-trust to leave room, to be delighted and surprised by the things that come across your, your path, you know, Mm -hmm. instead of packing it full so that there's no room for Mm -hmm. any of that, like magic to come in, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like. It's that definitely a lot. like one of my biggest biggest lessons. Um, it was also nice because I was dealing with some like it was not nice. I was dealing <laughs> and struggling with some serious morning sickness, mm-hmm. but because I was like so mm, sick <laughs> <laughs> on on Saturday, on Sunday I was actually like mostly okay. But because I was so sick on Saturday, I like didn't have any space or like time to be nervous because I actually like, think yeah, that without. Yeah. Without the, it was like a really weird blessing in disguise because mm-hmm. without the morning sickness, um, I think that I actually would have been much more nervous mm-hmm. and um, I don't know. It was, it was weird. And, but now that I've had that experience of just being like, I'm so sick, I'm just going to do the best that I can yeah, um, and it will be okay. And then it being like better than expected yeah. and yeah. like kind of blowing my mind. Yeah. It, it, it's like, I don't know. It was like a weird it was a weird blessing in disguise that like unlocked something for me in the future. Like I think because of that, I'll be so much less nervous in the future because I'll remember yes. what it felt like to not be worried about it because I didn't I have the capacity that. to be right. worried about it. You did not have the energy to be worried about it. I just was like, it. yeah. Yeah. I and love so, that so much. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like really grateful that I was like, and also telling them was like really sweet, but also kind of overwhelming. <laughs> it's like a room full of moms and I I don't know how to tell people that I'm pregnant I'm like such a weirdo Uh and so I just like I was not gonna tell them and Jen like Jen my older sister was like the photographer and she had like a camera like in my face and Mm. I was like okay we're gonna break for lunch and Jen was like and (laughs) and I was like (laughs) she like backed me into a corner oh my god I'm pregnant pregnant and then uh, the whole room screaming and, I was like, and cheering. And I, was like, and, and I was like, oh, God, this is overwhelming. It was <laughs> like, amazing. Thanks, guys. Because it's like, yeah. I don't know. Being – it's so funny because the thing – you know me. I have a really hard time with, like, being the center of attention. Like, right. that's not my favorite, and I have a lot of stories mm-hmm. around it mm-hmm. for sure. Um, and so – I don't know. I I just like anytime I do things like we did this weekend for me, the like I have to rem- I'm like you're not doing this for like you're doing this to like help and have an impact because right. that is why I'm doing it. But it right. feels um I don't know. I don't like when it feels performative, which is why I just mm-hmm. try to be like a goober while I do mm-hmm. it. I'm like this yeah. me being weird. Now you guys uh-huh. know how weird I am. <laughs> uh-huh. A goober. Oh my god so cute (laughs) I I do feel like I kind of came away with some some deep feelings of self-trust as well like um 
just because New I kinda, layers of self trust. I hope yeah. I, I think everybody walked away with that. Yeah. Yeah. It was really powerful. And I wasn't like, I wasn't like expecting, I don't know. I, I didn't have a ton of expectations any which way I was just trying, I was just going to show up, you know, and, and being able to like share and especially being able to share things off the cuff for me was so powerful. Um, you know, and it was so funny how many people I was like talking to and they're like, how did you prepare for all of this, that, and the, the, these questions and how did you prepare for this thing that you shared? And it was just like, there was no prep preparation. It was all like, it was all very yeah. intuitive, like off the cuff. And for me, that was kind of like, it reinforced the self-trust that like, I have like keys to give, like, and I know it's mm. like, I, it's like, I know, but it was kind of like rooted deep down that like, I, 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 ha I don't know, just like maybe how, how my mind works can be valuable to some people and sharing that can offer like important, you know, maybe things that are impactful and it just felt really good. And I, and I just, I came away from that being like, I like, I'm okay. I do. I like, I, I'm, I have stuff to offer. I don't know. It just like I was know. really reinforcing to that. And yeah. it felt me, it made, and like how many people, like how much like encouragement and how many people came up to me and was just like, your energy is just so like welcoming and calm. And I feel like I just want to be around you. And I was just like, okay, <laughs> like just like receiving yeah. all that. And just, and it felt, it made me just feel like, I, I don't know. It made me feel like I was doing something right. Like mm -hmm. there might be feeling like there's like a lot of things going wrong in life, but that made me feel like I, I was doing something right. If I was, totally. if my presence was making people feel loved and seen, then I must be doing something right. You know? Yes. And yeah. I loved, cause I was like, okay, you're going to host a panel <laughs> and ask questions. So maybe just mm -hmm. like think about questions while like these three people are giving their stories and then we'll all sit down and you can interview us. And it was so, I can't lie. I had like a big, like swelling of like pride when you were like asking oh. the questions because they were so <laughs> good. <laughs> and also something I noticed you did, and I don't know if you did it intentionally or just intuitively, but you would start with like a story to like be vulnerable uh -huh. first. And then you would ask the questions so that you were the one being vulnerable first. Uh -huh. And I think it encouraged like layers of vulnerability in the person being asked the question because the questions were like pretty profound and pretty like deep. Like they weren't mm. like they weren't surface level questions and required a lot of thought, but also a certain layer of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, like, because so many people, like I, even one of the panelists was like, did you just come up with these questions? <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, it's, and I was like, it's kind of her superpower. <laughs> It felt so good. Like yeah. leading that panel and get, cause I love asking questions anyways. And then yeah. literally having the point be asking questions and mm -hmm. maybe a little bit of like storytelling. I was like, this uh -huh. is, is this like, is this like, have I been realized? Like, is this what I meant to do? <laughs> like host panels. It felt so good to do that. Like it just, it, it did feel like I was like utilizing my strengths or whatever. And it, it was, it, it, I enjoyed that so much. I enjoyed I that feel so like much. that one of my strengths is seeing people's strengths and then helping them like use them. Giving them space. And yeah. Giving them a, mm -hmm. yeah. Like that's like how I built my team. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so it felt really good to see that play out. And yeah. then so many people came up to me and they're like, I thought, I thought Emily planned those questions for like six months. <laughs> like, <laughs> how the hell did she come up with those? And I was like, listen, <laughs> this is just how our brain works. And it's awesome. <laughs> uh, I do think it's true. You create, you um, create atmosphere and environment in, mm -hmm. in like a physical sense. Like, you, like, mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't even talk about how, amazingly beautiful the space was how you took this like bare room and you turned it into something that felt like a cozy living room like mm. and you did that and so you do it in like a physical manner but you also do it in like an energetic manner like in your teams you did it energetically mm. in that group where you create you create a space 
you set like a tone for the environment and the atmosphere. And then you like, and just what you said, you like pick the right people and you put the right people in the right places, like puzzle pieces that like makes this mm-hmm. whole thing. To come. It's this whole like level of brilliance that, that, and you're That's you, like, like are so good at that. <laughs> it's, it's weird. Cause I don't, I have a hard time in life, like just saying nice things about myself, period. Mm. But this is like an area where I'm like, this is a strength of this mine. I don't strength, know what you yeah. call it, but it's like, it's definitely like something that I, I I see in myself that I do and I do well. And I actually like really like it about myself. Yeah. It's like a facilitator of some sort. Yeah. Of like, of like personalities. Yeah. And that's why I remember I just was like, and then you're, and then on day two, I was like, you're going to lead these people through these exercises. I gave you like a structure but I was uh-huh. like, but just like do your own thing, like put your own spin on it. Then I'm like, I'm running, I'm like literally profusely sweating because everybody's being <laughs> led through these like visual, beautiful visualization exercises with Emily. Meanwhile, mm. I'm running back and forth from the beach to the venue, right. putting out 70 towels in a circle around a sound bath healer lady, <laughs> <laughs> Susie Copper Vessel. She's amazing. And mm. also like frantically calling you know, one of my best friends in town being like, can you go get like 70 flowers and like 10 bottles of sunscreen (laughs) help? And like, thank God for her. Stephanie like came in pulling up with like, she's like throwing flowers at me, throwing bottles of sunscreen Mm -hmm. at me because the sun Mm -hmm. suddenly came out. Like, this is what I'm doing. Uh Then I come back into the room and you're leading them through this like this visualization exercise where they're like getting in touch with their inner child and sh- and then like having that your the inner child be like really proud of the person that they are today and everyone is just like exploding into tears so i leave for like i'm i'm like literally that's what i'm doing i come in people are just like running out of the room like bawling and i'm like emily <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? I love you. I, I did have a moment because it that like landed in such an intense way that I was not expecting. And again, I'm just like intuitively like going yeah, with the flow here. This was not planned. None of this no. was planned. I gave no. you like maybe like 10 points to hit. Uh-huh. But like it was like, I mean, each of those points is probably like seven words, right? right. It was just like <laughs> right. get them to think about – uh, how they're proud of themselves now. Right. And you mm-hmm. just like took it like way deep. And uh-huh. then people are just like, I'm like literally like one girl, I'm like holding her in the hallway. <laughs> like, oh my God, I love you. Mm-hmm. It's all good so- tears. Mm-hmm. And I was just like cracking up because it was like another moment of you just doing your thing, being <laughs> Emily. I don't know. It was so intense. It was so powerful. So, mm-hmm. so powerful. I also remember because we were like going over and Ben was going to come like clean up and I'm texting Ben. I'm like, you need to like just rein it in, buddy. Because I know he came like straight from the gym. So I like uh-huh. know what Ben's like when he comes to the gym. <laughs> the <old jacket. laughs> I was like, yeah, he's like, woo, we're going to clean up this event. We're going to go home and it's going to be great. And I'm like, I'm like, people are crying. The vibe is very intense and emotional here. <laughs> we got to go with the flow and we're probably running an hour over. We are mm-hmm. not rushing this. Just hold your horses. Ben just like comes running up to the like sound bath with his like aviator glasses and his gym oh, like my God. outfit. And, took that and he's like, that I got him woo! <laughs> yeah. Ben is the best. He was like. And I, I whipped around. And I was like, that is not the vibe. <laughs> That's what I said to him. <laughs> And the two two people like in earshot heard me say that, and they were like crying, oh, laughing. Oh my god! They were, I like, didn't even way. know about that. That's hilarious. That's not the and he and he, and he immediately and he immediately was like, "Oh, oh, sorry," because everybody's like holding each other and like throwing petals in the ocean, I know. and like and Ben's all like jacked Woo! on pre workout. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love that. So I love much. Ben oh so much. Gosh. It was so he funny. Was he best. was such an he was like honestly my hero that like weekend. He yeah. his feeling his presence there was like one of the best things for me. Cause Saturday he sat in the room the whole time and I could just like look at him across the room and it like yeah. I don't know, it made me feel so much better. It was, was so just, like grounding. Ben's not my, even my partner and I felt bad. Like I felt so much better having him there. He was so grounding, like his presence being there. And we just, I don't know. I'm so grateful for him. 
so, so, so mm -hmm. much. And he's just, like, mm -hmm. turning up and down the thermostat because, like, one second we're boiling and the next we're freezing. So he's just, like, sitting by the thermostat. <laughs> thermostat like guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. Oh, mm. yeah. And the sound bath was so good. Susie is another person that we – Use, she came in uh, 2019. Uh, again, her business is called The Copper Vessel. She does these sound baths. If you've never done a sound bath before, like definitely check one out. Um, but she is so, she's so like intuitive herself. And I just gave her like, I don't know, a paragraph of what we would be doing mm -hmm. before. And right. then she led this whole experience mm -hmm. that was just so like resonated with everything we were doing and like beautifully like wrapped it up and integrated yes. it and like gave and like reminded them to like, you know, it was a very emotional day. Like, you know, be good mm -hmm. to yourself. And so I don't know. That was like, that was really nice. It I was such Susie. a powerful way to like end the whole thing to really like, yeah, like mm -hmm. integrate, tie it all together and like, ground down into like all all the things we touched on it was so it was so good mm -hmm. it was so good I'm like so excited to do more of this stuff I want to do more events I know yeah. I want to do more than one a year honestly yeah I want to do more than one a year yeah I, I I it was so it felt so good and I feel like it's gonna get like better smoother like more all, like more of that like self-trust so it's like less super effort and like it's more going with the flow and yeah I just mm -hmm. I'm so excited it felt so good it felt so in alignment with for us and I our love, strengths too yeah. I love bringing people together yeah. and that was the thing there was um I had a conversation with somebody who was talking to me about the event he's another business owner and he was like and he, and he was like uh you know well one he was like you're not charging enough for that event and I was like that's not mm -hmm. the point like the mm -hmm. point isn't like, honestly, like to make money at all. We did not right. like make money on this event at all. It's like so much more important. It's so much more about like community building and giving back to this community that I like love and care for so much Yeah, and, and getting them like connected with each other so they can like get to that place that they want to be. And I hope, and I actually don't see it growing much more than like 70 people felt like it the seems, right amount of people. Yeah. I mean, like maybe mm -hmm. 80 we could do, mm -hmm. but like, I don't want it to be like, I, I don't, and, and I, I know that this can change, but for mm -hmm. me right now, I don't, it doesn't appeal to me to have like a 500 person event or like a, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like yeah. you lose. To have it so big you that you couldn't connection. have a conversation with everybody. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I had a conversation with every single person pretty mm -hmm. much and like a good one, not mm -hmm. like a, you know, in passing. I mean, for sure, there wasn't enough time for me to have like as deep as I would like to get with everyone. Um, but yeah, it was yeah. just it was so good. So anyway, good. they blew me away. I love those mm -hmm. guys. Yeah. I like miss them. <laughs> I miss them. I know. <laughs> I miss them too. I want to hang out more. Like, why don't we have more? <laughs> like there were definitely a few people that I felt so like even like really drawn to, just like like mm -hmm. individuals, and that felt so good to just be like mm -hmm. oh, like to feel that connection with people, and mm, I just love it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. more events. More events in our future. In future. Events mm -hmm. are in my future. That's definitely mm -hmm. a part of what I'm doing in this life. And yeah. it's so, I'm so grateful for my three years as an event planner because the legit planning, the logistics of that event was like a breeze for me. Like that wasn't that's hard. All, and it's it a whole skill. Yeah. That's a skill set I do not have. Like, and that's such a good it lesson. It takes practice. In, like uh -huh, it takes sure, practice yeah. too. And seeing things play out. It's not even yeah. just like a skill set. It's like a experience you and you need to that. see yeah yeah and then you like you you create like a layout for example like the way a yeah. room is laid out is so important for like how things are created that's why I loved the library space at the Far Fairmont because it had so many different like nooks but yeah. like not too small that it was like exclusive feeling they were big enough to where it was like a group of like 10 people could comfortably sit and like have little mm. conversations 
And so you just have to like see it. And then like, while it's also going on after you've created it, like take it in and be like, Mm. okay, what's happening here? Where are people congregating? Where are people trying to stay away from? What's like, what feels good? What's like kind Mm. of uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. Um, I fucking love thinking about that stuff. Yeah. (laughs) Like it's, I don't know, weird, Mm. but it's a thing. Yeah. So. That's the, that is such a good like example of how sometimes, even though the event planning thing, I know like you got burnt out on that and it ended up being something that you just like did not want to continue doing, but like this, the, the, what you learned from that experience and how it's now playing in your life in a way that's like in mm-hmm. so much more in alignment. Oh, like, cause sometimes I feel like we go through things and we're like, why the fuck did I have to go through that? Or like, why the fuck? That's how that I felt about event planning. There? I was like, yeah. fuck event planning. I hate it. Mm-hmm. Well, but you know what I realized? I don't like planning. I don't like planning people's events when they don't listen. That was the that problem. Would be frustrating. Yeah. That was the problem because I'd be like, "You have to. You should do it this way for this reason," and they would just be like, "No," mm-hmm. and I would be like, "Well, you're doing it wrong." So I don't know what to tell you. And now I hate working for you. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> I love. It. I love so, so when much. it's my event and mm-hmm. I'm in charge and I get to choose how it works and flows and things like that because mm-hmm. I know what's important. And also a lot of times people don't want to spend the extra money on things that are actually really important. Mm. Like, and that is, that was really always really frustrating with me for me. Whereas I was like, no, this is actually very important and you need to spend money here. Um, So I don't like arguing with people about that. I just like spending my own money. (laughs) Doing your own thing. Being your own boss. (laughs) There's a theme there. (laughs) For sure. That's the theme. I don't like being told what to do. Don't tell me what to do. (laughs) Mm-hmm. it is Aww. the thing well, I well love you. that was, was so amazing i can't wait for more this. events yeah it really was it mm-hmm. really was um mm-hmm. yeah i just like i said way better than i expected and i don't even think it was like anything you or i necessarily did it was like everyone together this co-created something collective. really cool yes. mm-hmm. so all right well let me wrap up i can love you I love you. Till next time. (laughs) Bye.